Hi everyone, thanks for being here that early in the morning. Um, I'm going to talk about a motion sensor, a wireless motion sensor. My name is Cedric Rone, I'm from Tangible Display. I should speak louder. Okay. <laughs> I'll try my best. <laughs> um, so, in my company, Tangible Display, we build giant multi touch screens. Uh, that's how we make money. And we sell them to museums, we sell them to uh, luxury brands and things like that. But we also all have a musical background and we like to play with uh, objects, tangible things. So we made this one that's probably going to remind you of uh, the red table. This one is an open source version, uh, it's called Tangiblex. And basically you can control music with objects that are detected by the table. All of these objects, they have a unique identifier. They are recognized by three little feet that are simulating three little fingers. Uh, each object is, is unique, and we know the orientation, and we know the position. Uh, but when you take up the object from the table, from the two-dimensional surface, you cannot interact with it anymore. So what we thought about was adding a, a little sensor. Um, we pass if you want to have a look. Um, so we could interact even outside of this two-dimensional surface. Um, so to explain a little more. So you can see all of these objects, they control different they control different tracks, and each track can be modified or modulated thanks to the parameters in this program. So, when we thought about adding this sensor, we had this problem. We looked at what exists and we found that everything was either way too big, way too expensive, way too uh, consuming, or too complicated to use. So, we just gave up trying to find something and made our own. So, normally I would do a demo right now, but I've been a bit shortened on the time. Uh, <laughs> So I'll show you a little, a little video after all. Uh, and if you want to see me, I can also show you with my phone. Um, so basically, I went to this uh, festival called Burning Man. I've been uh, quite amazed by all of this creativity there. And one of the projects was uh, a, bowl, a huge bowl of flame. And my little dream is to control flame with motion. So this object allows to control the motion, control, sorry, any media out of your motion. Uh, so in this case, uh, you can see in this case, the music is controlling flames. But what if you were controlling it with a dancer? Uh, each of the motion would trigger a flame or light or music or effects. Uh, just an example that I want to try. But there's a lot of other possibilities. So some people came to see me and talked about serious things like uh, knee rehabilitation, um, artistic um, analysis in, for bridges, like civil engineering, uh, and a few other funny applications like put it on your drone and see what happens, put it on your skateboard. Um, and from this data, you can uh, control things like the light of the room, the sound of the the volume of the music that you're listening to. You can imagine putting it in maybe a, a candle and just control the, the volume of the music or the light. Uh, plenty of other things. Uh, very serious application. Uh, control the okay. game. Uh, so that's a, a way of using it. You can see that the orienting the sensor is sending an order to fake mouse. <coughs> Basically, the idea. Um, so, how did we do that? Thing? Um, as I said, we started by testing different um, development boards. So, the usual suspects are the famous TC, kind of Arduino compatible board, smaller, cheaper, and quite uh, little motion sensor board, and a wireless module. The three boards 
if you put them in one, you get one of them, twist, uh, it's same scale, one inch square, it's the size of a coin cell battery, and basically, I'm showing the two sensors on the board of, that was on the left, and the wireless module and the processor in this in this chip. Um, so to sum up, we have this new feature, which is Bluetooth through energy that allows communicating with um, smartphone, tablets, and computers also. Um, we have lower power, really, si really small size, autonomous, the batteries uh, at the bottom, so you can be independent with that. Uh, smaller, and it's open source. If anyone is interested, I'm happy to, to share with you some details. Uh, to collaborate. Uh, a little quick uh, explanation of what's happening inside of the firmware uh, in the, the processor that is embedded in, on the board. Uh, we have um, two kinds of, of, three kinds of sensor. Acceler accelerometer, everyone knows. But there's a magnetometer and the gyroscope. They, these are doing a bit of the same thing, but not exactly. I think that's the most important part. Um, the magnetometer, he knows roughly where the north is, but it's not very accurate, and it's quite slow. The gyroscope knows when you're moving, but when you're not, it doesn't know anything. So here, we do a, a 90 degrees rotation from, let's say, north here, and then uh, east, and north again. And that's the same. So you see only when it's moving on the gyroscope, and when it's moving back. To get the position from the velocity, the angular velocity, you integrate the data, which is an accumulation in the discrete world. So you do this integration or accumulation, which adds all the, all the noise. This noise adds uh, what we call a drift. So basically, when you start, you are at zero, zero degree, 90. And when you come back to zero, the drift makes that you don't know where you are. So to, to kind of fix that, we use the magnet model by merging them smartly and we get something nice. Um, so quickly, yeah, we make the fusion on board, send it over Bluetooth to energy, receive it in an application that I can show you afterward, and send it to an application like uh, Ableton Live, the musical the controller I was showing you. Uh, quickly, I made this uh, hardware using Ableton, it's a kind of Google Doc for PCB. I send it to the factory, got 20 processors fake, or 40. Uh, I went to my hackerspace, someone was working in a, in a hospital, he made an x-ray, we looked at all the, all the details, apparently the, the problem was in the processor. So, some more hackerspace pictures just to explain if ever you want to do this kind of surgery. Uh, you can just warm it up with a, a heat gun to remove pain, or you can use better tools like the, the real official heat gun, or you can just cook them with a normal hot plate. That actually works pretty well. Um, I could show you a video if you want afterward, but uh, timing is short. Quickly to avoid that kind of problem, testing. Time. Time is up. That's Sorry. the conclusion. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so if you want to speak with Cedric, please. please yeah. Also, it's an interesting topic. Uh, you'll be here the rest of the day. Yeah, we'll be here. <laughs> okay. So please find a better. Thanks very much.